Coming up on this episode of Design to the Nines, I'm going to show you how to build your own front porch bench with a bag for less than 40 bucks. If that sounds good to you, stay tuned. First time we're meeting welcome to my channel and if you enjoy videos about home decor and DIY then I'd ask you to consider subscribing to my channel below and turning the notifications on because I bring you weekly videos on these topics and I'd hate for you to miss a thing I've got a lot of fun things planned on today's episode I'm braving the heat it is a very hot and humid Florida morning. My projects this week are for my front porch. This will be part of a series of front porch videos. A few months ago, I did a front porch kind of update and makeover. I added some frosted numbers and paint of the front door, added some topiaries. It was pretty basic, but it was just to give it a little bit of love. And now I really want to take it up a notch and get it designed to the nines, right? So over the course of the next two weeks, I'm going to do several projects that I hope spark some um, ideas for your own front porch. And what we're doing today is I'm building a bench. Now the reason why I've decided to build a little bench seating area here is because my little boys and their friends, I find them congregating in this area all the time and I find them sitting on the ground of trading Pokemon cards. And so I want to give them a little place to sit. And I have this space right behind me that not a lot's going on. So I'm going to tuck a little um, bench in here. It's not going to be ginormous, only about 38 inches wide. Let's get started today because I want to spend as little time as possible out in this Florida heat. So I've got my lumber cut here. Each of these sides are 25 inches and then the um, width here is 34 inches. This is cut 34 by 38. We want the seat height, which is about two inches, to be approximately 18 inches when finished. So I moved it out back because it's a little bit cooler under the covered patio. So that's what we're doing out here. We're gonna mark it 16 inches, then line this up. That way we can kind of trace it so we can know exactly where it's gonna be on both sides. Then we're gonna flip this and you're just gonna repeat the same process on the other side. All right, so I'm gonna cut some of this strapping. It doesn't need to be like super amazing because all we're doing is using it as like kind of a support hidden underneath the seat. So it was like $1.15, super cheap. A two by 12 is actually only 11 inches wide. So there you go. <laughs> we are gonna cut this at 10 and a quarter inch. So we're gonna mark this and then we're gonna cut it. My nail gun, honestly, is my favorite tool of all time. I really love my miter saw, but once I discovered a nail gun with an air compressor, I can never go back because it makes your life so much easier. So I'm gonna use this for the next part. I'm going to be using my finished nail gun for this part. I also have a regular nail gun that I will use a little bit later but I'm going to be using a shorter nail here, so a finished nailer works better for this part. Line it up and make sure you leave a half inch gap on the back side. This is the width of my plywood. If you use a thicker plywood, you just need to adjust accordingly. This will help it set it in there nice and snug. Then nail it in on both sides and create a lip for the seat to sit on. All right, so I wanted to show you what I've done here. Um, so I've lined everything up in the basic formation of how I want it when it's finished and then you can see I've got the marks on the outside and then I've also made three X's of where I want to put in some very long wood screws and that's just to add a little more support we've got we've got these to support it and then I'm also gonna get some more of that and run it on the back so that should be fully supported and the screws are just kind of as a backup. Oops. <laughs> I'm gonna be using three and a half inch exterior screws and they actually have a star tip, you can see there. So I've made sure I've got the right tip on my drill and I'm just gonna go screw them in. I'm getting real here for you. Do you see the sweat just dripping down my face? Oh, it is so hot. 
So we have a basic structure of a bench and now we're gonna add some more stability by adding on a back. So I'm gonna take my regular nail gun and we're gonna just run some nails in to the back of the seat. This will add more stability and I've marked where to hit. Look how easy this makes it. Basically, it's taken shape. All right, I finally gave up and just pulled it back and just embracing it. If you ever question my love for you, let this <laughs> be exhibit A. All right, so we're moving on. I think this is like a one by three and a half or something like that. I got it for like 272 for the whole board. Um, so it's very inexpensive and we're gonna use this for the decorative trim. So I'm gonna cut two 34 inch lengths, one for the top, one for the bottom. Then we'll do some shorter lengths to do like the batten effect. So let's cut. So this is gonna add also some more stability and security because not only do we have a brace here, now we have one on the other side. So it kind of sandwiches that into place. So we'll just... So there we go. Now we're going to do some slats this way. Line that up so it's nice and snug. Make a mark and we'll make the cut. time to add some finishing touches. I'm going to do this by adding some caps to the arms and the back of the bench. So now I'm going to give it a quick sand down. All right, so I brought the party inside because it's way too humid to do staining. So I've put down a drop cloth and we are going to just get the job done in here. And what I've decided to do is a two-tone effect. I'm going to stain the seat part and then paint um, the rest of it in a black color. I'm using leftover paint and stain from my other projects So there's no added expense for me in this part. Oh, and I've got um, another piece of wood that I'm going to stain as well It's for next week's episode. So you're gonna want to stay tuned for that You'll have to come back to see what I'm I'm doing there But I just figured while I was staining the seat that I would stain next week's project as well I'm using a gel stain. I'm in an old sock and it's in Kona and this is the same gel stain that I used for my chandelier that I put tuna cans on. So if you want to see that project, I'll put the link above. So we don't have to be like super careful around here um, just because we're going to paint over that. All right, so the humidity has dropped down to about 54%, so we're okay to spray paint outside. You really want to do it less than 85%. I'm actually just going to use Kills complete spray on primer it rained even though the skies were mostly sunny go figure that one out what a bummer We'll put on the paint when it's good and dry. To make my life a little easier and so things will move a little quicker since I'm obviously working under the gun here, I'm, I'm gonna use some Paint Plus Primer spray paint and it's in just a, a flat black and I'm just gonna spray it on and then I'll probably do a spray on enamel finish as well just to seal everything from the elements. But this is supposed to be good indoors or out so we'll give it a try. Just get in all of the nooks and corners and crannies and all of that. Spray it from lots of different angles. I'm just gonna do a seal coat on my wood. Cause I think the rest of it's fine. Well, my project is done and I'm really happy with how it turned out. This project is completely customizable for your space. You can make it deeper. I would recommend making it a little bit deeper. Mine's a little on the narrower side, but that works for my space because of the space that it is available to me and it's for my kids so it's going to be just perfect for that 
and so if you were to do this and make it a little deeper I would go ahead and use three quarter inch plywood and then you could add some of the decorative trim on the side like what we did on the back I didn't need to do it because you can't see it from either direction so I just didn't go ahead and do that but I did this project for less than $40 I think it was like 37 and some change um, so it was really really affordable it was super easy to do you can definitely do it and this is yet another example that girls can use power tools which brings me to my next point that is my open invitation to my girls can use power tools challenge which is on the last Monday of this month and every month going forward join us join us and participate use a power tool for a project home decor or home improvement for more details about that, pop on over to my community page. My next co-host is Heidi Sonbull. She is an amazing and talented DIYer. It has her own YouTube channel here. Well, I hope you learned something today. I hope you found this tutorial valuable. Make sure you stay tuned next week. I know I've done some projects on the past. We painted the door, we added some frosted glass numbers and some topiaries. We're really gonna try to amp up the decor and make it feel like a welcoming space for your friends, your family, and your guests. So I hope to see you next week for that. So we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.